Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. This week we have got a bonus pick a card reading. As you know, I typically do one per week, but this week I've been guided to do two. And this week I've been guided to look at the topic, are you unshatterable? Okay, so it's a mini reading because yes, we've got our three groups, but they are just regular playing cards. There's no astrology in this one as such. Um, I'm just using a regular deck and four cards per group. You're gonna see it. It's gonna be a very brief reading for each one of you. But the main purpose behind making this video is in fact the introduction that I'm about to give. So before you watch any of these groups, you will need to listen to the whole introduction. I do recommend that because really, the main purpose of this reading is, is, is the content of uh, the introduction. Now, what am I going to cover in this introduction? Well, I'm going to take you through a Zen story about a Zen Buddhist master. So I'm just going to read that out to you. I'm also going to give you some examples of me as an astrologer. We're going to uh, made up, invented a little <laughs> fictional thing there, and it will help illustrate the concept further. And then the third thing I want to take you through is I'll just talk a little bit about Princess Diana and Julian Assange. Uh, I'm not going to go too in depth into yeah, everyone knows who they are and, and what they've done and what they do. The reason that I'm bringing this up at the start is just to say that this is not particularly a relaxing reading, right? This is not um, a chill out sort of, uh, you know, this, this one will get you to think. Okay, and this might be a bit challenging. And sometimes when we talk about things like ego, that can be triggering for some people. So what I want to say to you is that if you're not feeling like doing some soul work, then please don't watch this reading, okay? Because this one is going to get you to think a little bit and look at yourself and to see how unshatterable are you. Now I can promise you anybody who successfully watches the entire introduction and then watches their group one, two or three, you are unshatterable, okay? Like anyone who makes it to the end of this video, you are of course um, unshatterable and you will be needed going forward to help other people who, who might, um, you know, feel bad after learning certain information or, or whatever it is, right? Uh, and that's, that's, that's what I know for sure. So if you're here, it means you're here, you want to do a bit of soul work. And I know um, the New Earth reading, it did get a lot of great comments and a lot of you indicated that I want to help build this New Earth. And I tell you what, if you're one of those people who wants to help build this New Earth, part of your role is going to be about helping people who who aren't ready for it or um, you know who who would rather the old ways to stay in place or, or whatever it is right so let's let's get into this concept of what it means to be unshatterable the, the best way to illustrate it is through this story that is about a Zen master named Hakuin. Now, I, I looked on the internet at a few different websites. I've just picked this one and I'm gonna read out the story word for word. I'll give you the link to where this story is coming from. And I think it really nicely describes this concept of what it is to be unshatterable. So I'm gonna read it and then we're gonna get into this topic. So Hakuin, the Zen master was greatly respected and had many disciples. At one time in his life, he lived in a village hermitage, close to a food shop run by a couple and their beautiful young daughter. One day, the parents discovered that their daughter was pregnant. Angry and distraught, they demanded to know the name of the father. At first, the girl would not confess, but after much harassment, she named Hakuin. The furious parents confronted Hakuin, berating him in front of all of his students. He simply replied, is that so? When the baby was born, the family gave it to Hakuin. By this time, he had lost his reputation and his disciples, but Hakuin was not disturbed. He took delight in caring for the infant child. He was able to obtain milk and other essentials from vi villagers. A year later, the young mother of the child was troubled by great remorse. 
she confessed the truth to her parents. The real father was not Hakuin, but rather a young man who worked at the local fish market. The mortified parents went to Hakuin, apologizing, asking his forgiveness for the wrong they did him. They asked Hakuin to return the baby. Although Hakuin loved the child as his own, he was willing to give up the baby without complaint. All he said was, is that so? As we can see here through this story, at every turn, Hakuin is very peaceful, he's, he's very calm, he's undisturbed, as it says, and he simply says, is that so? Now, I would say that this is a great example of a man who is utterly unshatterable, right? He can't be shattered, um, you know, and it, it's really interesting that the, the word truth gets a mention here where it says the daughter confessed the truth to her parents, right? And when she originally told her parents, I mean, she told them a lie, but the parents took it as truth. So truth and lies comes into this thing of being unshatterable, right? What's the truth? What's a lie? And ultimately, are we unshatterable? And this is the thing that I think we all need to develop. And through spiritual teachings, through spirituality, through coaching, through personal development work, self-development work, self-love, self-care, all these kind of things, we can come to a place within ourselves. We can find that place within us where we are unshatterable, right? And that's going to be, I believe that's going to be important uh, in the coming year, for example. I'll give you another example. So I thought about me as an astrologer, right? And, uh, you know, my profession is astrology, sidereal Vedic, I absolutely love it. And let's say, now I, when I was learning astrology, I actually got uh, this ball, like this giant sort of, it's probably about this big, this kind of blue ball. And I, I got this white ribbon and I, I would um, put the ecliptic lines and this and that and I had a tennis ball for a sun and I you know it, my room became this very strange place with planets and all kinds of things and um, you know I learned the whole system as balls in the sky right but then let's say what if I was to watch some flat earth videos and I go oh hang on a minute that, gee this all sounds pretty compelling um, for me I turn into that Zen guy Hakuin and I kind of go is that so and I'm like is that so I, I, I don't particularly believe any which way, one way or another. I mean, I still visualize it all as balls in the sky. But the reason I bring this up is that, you know, if someone comes along and tells me that, well, everything you had visualized, it's actually not that, it's this, right? It's something different. I'm not going to have a meltdown, <laughs> okay? Because for me, anyway, I mean, the reason I'm not gonna have a meltdown is because I'm not an astronomer, and I'm not, that's actually not my profession. But, um, and I'm not that scientific. And for me, how I approach astrology is it's more about meanings and synthesis, and the things that are going on in my mind, it, it, it's, it's different, um, because it's about synthesizing meanings and, you know, I, I've got different processes happening in my brain. But let's, okay, let's take an example. I've got written down on my notes here. What if someone comes and says, okay, it's not 12 signs, it's 20. And the nakshatra system doesn't work and it's actually this and it's actually that. And, you know, I would, okay, I would probably, you know, be taken aback a bit, but, um, but you know, I think I'd be able to go with the flow. I think I'd be able to go, okay, well, uh, I, better, I better shift, you know, I better do something different. Another example, what if someone tells me that YouTube is about to shut down, okay? We're not gonna have YouTube in a year. They're all tanking. They're all, you know, Twitter and Facebook have just lost 50 billion and everything, everything's changing. Everything's changing on its head and within one year, it's gonna be this. Well, okay, you know, and I, I wanna be that person in the middle going, is that so? And okay, I gotta turn on my heels and I gotta do something else and I gotta learn something else or, you know, use my skills in another way or whatever it is, right? So that's another example. Um, another example that I've got written down here is, is, is looking at, say for example, Princess Diana and Julian Assange, right? Look at how they were, you know, um, lifting the lid on certain truths in our world and um, you know wouldn't it be great if everybody had 
the composure of Hakuin to say, is that so? It, wouldn't it be amazing if everybody could take the information in? If everybody could just listen and say, is that so? Right? That, that would be really amazing. And what has happened to those two people, Princess Diana and Julian Assange, is that, you know, I feel like a lot of people, they, they, don't, they don't want to listen. They don't want to contemplate any of what they're bringing to light or, um, you know, they, they, don't want to, they don't want to go there. And I think as a spiritual person, we are the ones, we, we go down the rabbit holes partly as a, as a training ground to become unshatterable. Do you know what I mean? I think that one of the reasons that we click on the dodgy videos and the weird stuff and the, do you know what I mean? Like we, we, we engage with all kinds of different content. So yes, we'll watch everything from CNN to like, you know, the bloke in the bedroom who's got thinning hair and, and whatever else, right? Like we click on everything because, because we want to go down all these rabbit holes. We want to become unshatterable because we want to be of service just in case everything turns on its head. And, you know, the, the, the thing of lies get exchanged for truth and all this kind of thing that was happening in that Zen story that I read out, right? We want to be Hakuin. We want to be the person that says, is that so? And one of the things I was thinking about with this topic is our ego investments. Where do we invest our ego, right? And that's where we come to this reading here today. Because in the pick a card, when you pick your group, what I'm going to show you is potentially where your ego investments are. Okay, so, so where your ego investments are. So, and I'm just, I, I'm just, it's a really, really simple reading because what I'm going to do is really analyze the elements. And if we've got, say, for example, let me pull out some cards. So if we've got, I'm going to do a little bit of analysis as we go um, on the exact cards because each card has its own meaning. I do know all the meanings, but um, I'll just give you a very, very simple example. I'm going to pull out some di a diamond card here. So that's earth. Okay, uh, let's have clubs. That's wands. We're going to have, I'm going to get another one. I want a spade. So we've got a heart. There we go. We've got beautiful two of cups hearts there what's the other one well, let's get a spade card come on there must be one here somewhere so how am I going to read these how I'm going to read these is to look at okay so where have you got so let's say this is a spread for somebody well this person has got their ego very beautifully uh, invested slightly in in all these different things so in in the material world uh, now fire, what, what am I going to do? So that's earth, right? Fire, what am I going to do here? I'm going to say, well, that's opinions. Okay, that, because that's live performance and you want the reviews, you want the opinions of others. Or you invest your ego in the opinions of others, like as in what they think of the situation. Um, we've got the two of hearts, okay, hearts, cups, emotions. So maybe your ego is quite emotionally involved or invested, right? And then spades, what's that? That's air. So that is intellect, okay? And so your ego will be invested in, like you would care for, say, for example, where is this information coming from? Does that person have a Harvard degree, right? And if they do, then that modulates how, how you feel and think about things, etc., etc. So that's a very simplistic reading uh, way of reading this so why don't we get stuck in let's do this so that's been quite a long intro so to those of you who've stuck around that means you're really serious about this topic and you you want to do a bit of soul work so let's take a look let's take a look at group number one now as I say these are going to be quite short readings okay group one let's take a look at your cards so we've got Three of hearts, eight of spades, six of diamonds, jack of diamonds. Okay, so I would say that you are definitely an unshatterable person, okay? Now also, if, if you've just clicked on your group number one and you haven't listened to the intro, 
This is one where you really need to listen to the intro, okay? So I'm going to make you listen to the intro. Please listen to the introduction. I would say you're definitely unshatterable, okay? I think that you have been in your life a really hardworking person. You have um, cared about your material life um, and getting that in order for sure. I think there has been at times a reliance on uh, the intellect and less so on emotions. I don't feel like when it comes to decision making and how you handle the ground moving beneath your feet, right? When the ground's moving beneath your feet and you need to do a 180, I feel like you're not going to be too emotional about it. I think you're going to be quite grounded and hardworking about it, right? So if things change like that, I think your response is going to be, can I work harder? Can I improve my material self? Can I improve my material life? There's a tiny little bit of victim energy being represented by this card. But I feel like with you, I feel like you shake it off quite quickly. I don't feel like this is a problem at all. Where this can be is that you are going to help other people. So if things change on a dime and the whole world changes overnight or whatever it is, you're going to be the one that's going to help anybody who's stuck in their heads, uh, overly intellectual about it, and, and perhaps people who are emotional about it. I think you're going to be this rock solid presence who rolls up your sleeves. You know how to earth yourself quickly. You know how to ground yourself quickly. You know, okay, all hands on deck. And I know what needs to happen, right? And I, I know how to support these people in my life. So I really think, group number one, you are quite unshatterable. And I feel like you're going to be quite a force. Uh, in the future when it comes to helping other people who say for example are, are maybe waking up to an uncomfortable truth or, or whatever the case may be I feel like you're really going to help them uh, a huge amount so this is, as I say has been a tiny mini bonus reading there's nothing to it so I hope that that's all right we are now going to meet group number two Joe's group number two, welcome, welcome to your reading, your mini reading, your bonus mini reading for the week. This is absolutely tiny, guys. What I'm going to say to you is that you must listen to the whole introduction before you engage with this reading, okay? Because everything is explained, the concept is explained in the introduction. So this reading is not a chilled out, easy one, this is a little bit of work, okay? We've got to think about things here. This concept of are you unshatterable, I would say you are absolutely unshatterable, okay? I think you're the kind of person who, I think you do, um, you know, working, working hard has been important to you in your life. I think you have worked really, really hard with this card here, this eight of pentacles or diamonds. You're also, you've got a lot of patience. You've got a lot of ability to, to wait. You've got a lot of ability to, um, to wait and see and to not rush, okay? These are great qualities. So when it comes to being unshatterable, I think you know how to roll up your sleeves and work, right? And, and turn on your heels and, and take the new information in and, okay, we're going to go with this. I'm going to build a new thing. It's okay. Is that so, right? You're going to be fine. With this energy here, I think you'll take your time. You'll go slow. With this energy here, I can sense that you do care about the opinions of others, okay? Uh, now, is this a good thing or a not so good thing? Let's have a look here. This is intellect, communication, yep. With this fire energy here, I do sense that you you do care about the opinion of other people. So that could be a slight place where uh, you know the un the unshatterable thing 
yes, you are unchatterable. I do feel like, and maybe, do you know, here's what it probably is, that you'll be helping people. These are the energies where you're going to be helping people. This is kind of like group one, what we just went through. I think if, if let's say, everything changes on a, on a dime, like on a, on, a, on a click, the whole world changes overnight or whatever it is, I think you're going to help people around you who are... who are kind of um, basing truth on the opinion of others, right? Rather than looking to their own intuition, rather than looking within themselves, rather than going, okay, what's my authority? What do I think? I think there are going to be some people around you in the future, say, for example, if things change on a dime or, you know, this, this thing of, you know, uh, the whole world changes overnight or whatever it is, right? I feel like you're going to help people who, have, who kind of have trouble coming to their own conclusions, quite possibly. And I think you're going to help people to see through the lies and, and identify what the lies are. I feel like you're very grounded you got this beautiful energy here. You're a very, very grounded person. You take your time. You know that we mustn't, like Hakuin, the Zen master, you know not to rush to any conclusion. Okay, like the parents rushed to a conclusion, right? And they came to him and they said, oh, you had an affair with our beautiful daughter. How dare you? And he's like, is that so? you got a lot of is that so energy, okay? You've got a lot of that ability, ability to be patient, to take time to go, is that so? You know, let's take a look at this. Let's slow down. Let's, you know, maybe, maybe in a few years from now, all these opinions and miscommunication is going to be turned on its head. It's going to be something totally different, right? You've got that. You've got that ability to know that a few years from now, this could all be something totally different, right? You've got that long-term, I'm in it for the long haul. I'm not going to make up my mind in a very great rush, right? I'm not in a rush to form opinions. And I think there are going to be people around you who are in a rush to form opinions and who do miscommunicate. As I say, you're very hardworking and I feel like you're going to find your way through, okay? Uh, I, I see that. Yeah, totally. So, guys, this has just been a little mini reading. I hope this is a good little bite-sized bit. And we are now going to meet group number three. You chose group number three. Welcome. Welcome to your reading. Your very mini reading. Now, this is a mini, tiny, tiny, tiny little reading. There's nothing to it, guys. Um, for this reading, you will have to listen to the full introduction. Otherwise, some of this may not make sense. Okay, so we've got the Queen of Spades, the Ten of Spades, and we've got the Nine of Clubs and the Seven of Hearts. Okay, so what is going on here in this reading? Well, let's take a look at our question that we've got for today, which is, are you unshatterable? I'd say that you are, yeah, this is, this is, a, this is a heck of a spread, this one. This is... You're all over it. You are unshatterable massively, see? Okay? Because you got, you got this lovely one on your side, right? You're very, very sharp. Through your intellect, no one can buck you, okay? I feel like very quickly, let's say if the world turns on its head overnight or, or whatever it is, everything changes or you know, um, whatever it is, crazy things happen or whatever. I feel like you're sharp, you're incisive, you will figure things out very quickly by using your intellect. I think it's a real strong point for you. I think what the, with the other point about things being unshatterable is that you're going to have people around you who you're going to need to help. And I think these people are going to be very opinionated and they're going to be very emotional uh, and you are going to have to use your terrific intellect to help these people calm down <laughs> or um, 
or see that there are options. You know what I mean? I think, I think you're going to have to use your, your incredible intellect to help people around you see that, you know what, there is so much out there. And what we see, this is not it. This is not the only thing. There is so much to reality. There is so much out there. There are so many opportunities. There's, there's so much more to this life. You know, um, I feel like you've really got what it takes here to help people around you in case you end up helping others in a situation where, yeah, as I say, the world turns on its head and overnight everything changes or whatever it is, right? I don't know if that's going to happen. I have no idea. But like, what I know is, is that um, you've, you've got a really strong set here. And I do kind of see, I see some strong voices around you, very passionate people who are very opinionated. But through your intellect, you kind of, you're, yeah, you're going to be able to, to take this on if you have to, okay? Um, there is also the thing of, retreating right if you want to retreat if you want to withdraw if you want to if you want to be like do you know what yeah I've got this fantastic intellect but there's no way I can resolve <laughs> the chaos that's around me if you do feel like that you can always uh, say do you know what I'm gonna check out people I, I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to deal with this all right because you know how it is like when when everything changes and people look to you and they go, well, come on, what, what are you going to say, right? And you're this queen of uh, swords here. And you'd have brilliant things to say, but equally you might want to retreat. You might want to go, do you know what? It's not my job. It's not my job to uh, resolve everything. And I can, I can definitely see that, right? And wait for people to ask. That is another thing that I will say. If people don't ask for your help, then, and I, I know that one, I, as a healer, that's the first rule of healership. If people don't ask, you can't help them. And that's what I always find that a really sad thing. But that's, that's true, you know. Um, But as I say, you're massively equipped <laughs> to, to, to get yourself through any situation. Tap into that great intellect of yours, use your mind, okay? And if, if you don't think you've got a great intellect, well, I would say to you, please go within and get in touch with it because you do have, right? You've got a magnificent intellect. Intellect is not, you know, um, some academic university type thing. It's not a piece of paper on the wall. It's none of that. It's, it's, it's using your mind and it doesn't have anything to do as well. I know people get hung up on, oh, but my mercury's combust and all that kind of thing. No, don't worry about that. My Einstein had all of that. You know what I mean? Like I've seen so many charts of people who, um, you know, they're very contrary to, to what they did in life. You can go beyond. These are all gifts within and they're just waiting for us to give them attention and, and tap into them, right? So, and of course, withdraw, withdraw. I am seeing that energy here, that you may want to withdraw. Don't feel like you have to save the world just because you've got all the answers or this beautiful intellect, right? Uh, wait for people to ask. People, people may need to ask, and that's, that's a good thing. All right, well, group three, that's a, that's a beautiful little reading. Uh, I hope this has been a good reading for you. As I say, it's a bit of soul work, so I hope nothing's been too triggering or any of that here um please let me know how you get on in the uh, comments below i really love hearing from you and i look forward as always to seeing you next time take care mm -hmm.